Hey everyone, so in this video today, I'm gonna talk about my experience so far using the M1 Mac Mini as a photographer and a filmmaker, share my setup and the accessories that I use, and then also talk about why the M1 is probably the best gear investment I've ever made. So I've been using the Mac Mini M1 for about six months now. I basically ordered it as soon as it was announced. Um, you can't see it right now because it's mounted under my desk, which I'll share that setup after. But I've been using it for all my photography work uh, recently for some television editing uh, for a client, some video production work, filmmaking stuff, and it's just performed amazing. So. What I wanna to do today in this video is just talk about why I've been so happy with it. I know uh, when you're looking into these things, it can be easy to get caught up in like specs and comparisons and stuff like that. And that's not what this video is about. I just wanna share kind of my real world experience and also share some of the things that kind of round out the system like monitor, hard drive, and other things like that. So we'll start this video then with the Mac Mini M1 and the model that I bought is the 16 gig RAM version with the 500 gigabyte SSD. So I decided to obviously go with the maxed out RAM version. I only went with the 500 gig SSD just because I'm using an external RAID drive for all of my work files. The internal drive is really just for the OS and for software. But, you know, I mentioned earlier, this is the best gear investment I've ever made. And the reason for that is because it's shown me the biggest improvement or the most drastic improvement when it comes to a computer purchase. And it just so happens that it's probably the cheapest computer that I've ever bought as well, which is just crazy. So uh, back in the day when I was doing a lot more television editing work, we were always using like top spec'd out Mac Pros. And I remember whenever a new version would get released and we'd upgrade, I'd always be like a little bit disappointed in terms of the performance improvement that you would see. It's almost like you would expect more considering you were spending like five, six, seven thousand dollars. So the fact that this computer cost me a thousand pounds, I think it's probably a thousand dollars US to buy. And the fact that it's probably the fastest computer that I've ever used is just pretty wild. So like I said, I don't have any speed or performance tests in this video, but all I can say is that I've seen a drastic improvement in the software that I use with the Mac Mini M1. It's been so substantial that it's sped up my entire photo and video workflow. So the two programs that I use the most for my work are Adobe Lightroom and also Final Cut Pro X. And when it comes to Adobe Lightroom, they actually just recently released an optimized M1 version and the performance gains have been really nice. So in the past, you know, working with these massive film scan files that are like 10,000 pixels wide, I would notice like lagging and stuttering when I was zooming into 100% on files or when I was using the clone tool, just anything that was really kind of intensive, I found that the software would start to chug and the computer had a hard time keeping up. So it's been nice to just have this really kind of smooth operation now with the M1. And then also exporting files has been quite a bit quicker as well. So there have been some nice improvements with Lightroom. When it comes to Final Cut Pro, that's probably uh, where I've seen the most improvements that I have to say. You know, working with uh, these H.265 files from the Fuji X-T4 can be an absolute nightmare when it comes to playback, especially when you start color grading them. Uh, but with the M1, I can view them, you know, 4K, full res, multiple effects, color graded in real time. It's super smooth, it's just been incredibly impressive, like no computer I've ever used before. And then it's also just shaved render and export times down a ton. So again, I don't have any numbers, but you know, I know with my MacBook Pro, fully specced 15 inch before, there were some times, depending on the footage and effects, that I was waiting a couple hours to export a 4K timeline, which would be an absolute nightmare. I think with the Mac Mini M1, I've never waited any longer than like 20 minutes, and that's for like, 15, 20 minute timelines with all sorts of different footage and effects. So it's really kind of saved me a ton of time when it comes to both Lightroom, but especially Final Cut Pro and exporting footage. There have been a couple of downsides though, which I wanna talk about, although they have all been pretty minor. So overall, when it comes to compatibility, almost everything has been fine. All of the programs that I use have worked, including ViewScan for film scanning, and then obviously all the editing softwares and stuff like that. But where I have run into a few issues is just updating either the OS or software and then all of a sudden opening it up and either a program doesn't work or a certain plugin doesn't work. And I really think it's because some manufacturers are still trying to catch up and optimize things completely. So it's never been a huge deal, but the one time that was 
quite a pain in the ass was I updated my OS and then all of a sudden the software that I use for my RAID drive wouldn't work anymore. It took the company like a month to fix the problem just because there was apparently some big issue. So for a month I couldn't use my RAID. I had to plug it into a different computer and transfer things. It was just an absolute nightmare. But part of that is my own fault just from not learning over the years that you should always wait to update. Anyways, I always get kind of antsy and do it right away. So really now, I'm just waiting like a month or two to update my OS or software. You know, if it's working as it is right now, I'm just basically going to leave it. But I do think that'll change, you know, as the M1 system's out for longer and more companies update their software and optimize programs to work with this system. So overall, the M1 has in a way provided me with that performance increase that I always expected to see in the past when I was upgrading to like a top spec expensive model. <laughs> The difference with this, like I said, is that it's the cheapest Apple computer that I've ever bought before, and that just makes it that much more impressive. So I know some people are worried about 16 gigs of RAM not being enough or the system not being upgradable, but all I know is in its configuration as it is right now, it does everything I need it to do. It works with 4K footage, raw footage, handles massive film scan sizes, and it does it all as fast as I could ever want. So I've been super happy with it and I think something like this will suit a lot of creatives out there. So next we'll jump into talking about components and accessories. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is talking about the monitor I'm using, which is the LG 5K Ultrafine 27 inch. So this is the version that LG made with Apple. I'm pretty sure it's uh, the exact same screen used in the older 5K IMAX. And this has been my favorite monitor that I've ever owned. It's obviously not super cheap uh, but what i love about it is a couple things so the quality obviously you know it's very accurate and it's also the 5k is nice got a lot of detail but then also just the simplicity of this so all i've ever done with this monitor is i just plugged it in and i use it it's the first monitor that i actually haven't calibrated since i've been a photographer and i've owned a lot of different monitors and done a lot of printing over the years and i know some people we're gonna think that's probably a bad idea, but all I care about at the end of the day is if the output matches what I see on my screen. And for me, all the printing that I've done, if I'm conscious of the brightness levels, the colors and the tonality have been excellent, have matched what I see on screen. And then also, when it comes to web, you know, all of my work I'm viewing on an iPhone or my MacBook Pro, I'm sure a lot of other people are as well. So I just care that when I go and look at my videos and when I go and look at my photos on my iPhone or my laptop, that they look the same as they do on the screen. And with this, they're almost identical. And that's something I've struggled with in the past, even owning higher end, you know, Flanders Scientific monitors that are calibrated perfectly from the factory. There can still be issues you run into with ICC profiles and different gammas and things like that. So this monitor has been so simple, plugged it in, it works. LG Ultrafine 5K, absolutely love this screen. Next up is an essential item for the Mac Mini, and that is the CalDigit TS3 hub. So obviously the Mac Mini only has two Thunderbolt connections on the back of it, so you need something uh, like the TS3 to be able to plug the rest of your stuff into. And with my setup, I'm running my RAID drive directly into the Mac Mini into one of the Thunderbolt 3 ports, and then the other one is for the CalDigit, and then everything runs into the CalDigit. So I have my monitor, a couple older USB drives, I have my XLR adapter, also has an SD card slot on the front, headphone port, uh, ethernet plug-in, all of these other things. So it essentially gives me everything I want. It's also nice and compact, you know, it just sits under this little desk accessory here. So I've been really happy with the CalDigit. Obviously there's other options out there as well. I think it just comes down to picking the one that has kind of the right ports for you. But this has basically allowed me to use the Mini in a professional environment where I can hook up everything else that I need to run my system. Next up is my main working hard drive, which is the OWC Thunder Bay 4 12 terabyte RAID system. So I've been using OWC stuff for pretty much my whole career. This thing weighs a ton, actually. I haven't picked it up in a long time, uh, but just love their products. Never had any issues, knock on wood, with their hard drive systems. Uh, this one, as mentioned, is a 12 terabyte RAID, and it hooks up via Thunderbolt 3. And what I love about this is I run it in RAID 0, which is basically the fastest configuration, but it offers you no redundancy or protection. Uh, but 
out of this thing, I'm getting like 600 megabit speeds, 600 megabit a second speeds. Uh, and that's with it at like 75% full. I just tested it before I started recording this video. So that's plenty fast for everything I need. And then obviously gives me a ton of capacity. And then as a backup though, cause obviously if one of the drives in here fails, everything's gone. So weekly, I just hook up an eight terabyte, I believe it's a Western digital, uh, just USB three older hard drive. And I back up the most important content on here that I'm working on. So it kind of gives me a little bit of insurance in case anything ever happened with this. And then I have one more drive I wanna talk about. This is called a Juggler, it's by Delkin. This little thing is a two terabyte SSD, Thunderbolt as well, super fast, like thousand megabit a second uh, speeds out of this. What I love about this is obviously it's super compact, nice and slim. And I just use this for travel. I use it for working in between the M1 mini system and my laptop. And then I can also take this thing and I can plug it directly into my Blackmagic Pocket 6K and record onto this, unhook it, transfer the files onto here. So I love having little drives like this around. This is kind of my main travel drive. You can throw it in the laptop bag, take it anywhere. And it definitely is multi-purpose and also very, very fast. So Juggler by Delkin, this thing has been super useful. So next up, I wanna talk about some accessories that have been an amazing addition to this whole setup. And I wanna start with a few from a company called GroveMade. So GroveMade is based in Portland, Oregon. They make desk and office accessories, but it's all handcrafted, super stylish, kind of premium stuff. Very nice, and it's been an amazing addition to this setup. Uh, they actually reached out to me when I was putting this office together, wondered if I wanted to check a few of their items out. Uh, so I have four here today that I'm pretty excited about and that have really tied in nice to this whole system. The first is this monitor stand, and this has probably been my favorite addition out of the bunch. So just super stylish, really well built. Uh, it's this plywood with maple finish on the top. I believe this is cork, these legs, it has this wool and aluminum shelf, but it's just been a really nice addition to not only get the monitor a little bit higher uh, for a nice kind of eye line with it, but then it gives me you know room to put these speakers. Then it opens up all this space uh, underneath the monitor now where I have my CalDigit hub, XLR adapter, have some other things on the shelf. It almost just adds like this different dimension to the desk and obviously uh, it's very stylish and kind of helps add to the theme that I'm going for here. And this is a nice change because for me, if you watch some of my older videos in the past, I would use like a stack of photography books to put my monitor on, which did the job fine, obviously, uh, but pretty excited to have something like this now. And I think it's a pretty cool addition. They also sent over a few other accessories like this wool desk pad, which is really nice, adds a little bit of texture and kind of warmth to the desk. I use it for the mouse and the keyboard, and it also kind of doubles as a mouse pad. There's also this headphone holder. This thing's really nice, just super chunky and solid. It's this walnut as well that has this leather finish to it. Uh, same aluminum as the shelf, I'm assuming. And then I just love all these little details in their products. You know, underneath it's this cork with their logo in there. Uh, so just the finishing touches on their products are very nice. This thing's been great because you can just kind of take your headphones off, put them on top, and they're tucked away. Nice. And then the last thing is just this desk organizer. So this is also that same aluminum and then this cork on the inside. I usually keep this in my drawer, but it's just a nice way to put like your pens. I usually put all my exposed film in here and it's tucked away in the drawer. Nice and tidy, some notebooks, some things like that. And that's the thing with all this Grove made stuff is obviously it looks really nice. It adds to the feel and the vibe that I'm going for in here with this setup, but then it's also just very practical as well. So again, in the past, in my drawer, I used to just have like a plastic bin and it did the job fine, but it is nice to finally have some accessories like this that really kind of complete the setup. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is another fun accessory, and that is the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. So BenQ reached out at a similar time and they wanted to see if I wanted to check out the Screen Bar Plus. And at first I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't know how much I would use something like this, but I've actually grown to love this and it's probably one of my favorite additions. And in the past, I've always loved having a lamp in my office, uh, but at times it can be distracting if you're looking at your monitor and then off to the one side on your desk, you have like this glowing orange lamp. 
So what's nice about this is it sits above your monitor and when you're not doing color critical work, you can have it on and it basically illuminates your work area, but you don't get distracted by seeing the actual light itself. So super nice. And then also the cool thing is you have this controller here, so you can actually adjust the color temperature. You can go cooler or warmer and then you can control the brightness as well. So it's been great for especially working up here in the evening once it gets a little darker, you can dim it down, you can change the color temperature. Uh, just a, a great addition. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who likes to have a lamp in their office but maybe struggling a little bit with it affecting them when they're working at their computer screen. So overall, these are kind of the main items that make up my photo and video editing setup. I've been very happy with all of them, how they tie together, super functional, and it just allows me to come up here into this space and do work and get the things done that I need uh, in the quickest and most kind of productive way possible. And the Mac Mini M1, for any creatives, if you've been thinking about upgrading to one and been on the fence, all I can say is that from my experience, I've been incredibly impressed and it's definitely saved me a lot of time and a lot of headaches with my photo and video projects. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, links to all this stuff. If I didn't cover something that you see, let me know in the comments below and I will try my best to answer it. But just wanna say as always, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.